Right, I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for joining me, as always, with these live streams. Please let me know in the chat if you can see me and you can hear me okay. And welcome to a solo playthrough of Golem, uh, one of the big hits from last year's Essen. And now I've already done a multiplayer playthrough of this game, uh, which was a tutorial and playthrough. So if you are interested, because uh, I'm not going to be doing a full tutorial today, but if you are interested in learning how to play the multiplayer game, go and check out my channel because I have done a full four-player, I think it was four-player, tutorial and playthrough video. Audio and video is working okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Today we're going to be doing the solo mode, uh, and whilst I won't be doing a tutorial of how to play the, the whole game, I will be covering how the solo mode works. Um, what's interesting about the solo mode for this game, unlike a lot of other solo games, is that I'm playing a two-player game against an Automa. Now, that doesn't sound anything different from a lot of other solo games, but the difference with this is the Automa can actually be used in games with more than one player. So we could play a two-player game and use the Automa as a third player, or we could play a three-player game and use the Automa as a fourth player. Um, so yeah, it's basically, it's an extra dummy player that you can add on to either a solo game or a two-player game or a three-player game. Right, now, I've done a lot of the setup uh, for us. Before we dive in, I just wanted to get a few things out of the way. First thing is, uh, this is not a sponsored video, uh, so I've basically taken the whole day off work today to set this up, prepare for it, and do this live stream. I'm only able to do that thanks to the support of my Patreon supporters. So a huge thank you to all of my supporters for giving me the flexibility financially to take time off work to create these videos. And if you do like the content that I create, you can support me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Let's just put a link in the chat. If it works, I should have got this ready. There you go. Um, second thing is I've not fully played through the solo game before. I did a, a practice game this morning where I played through a bit of it. Um, but if you do spot me doing anything wrong, please let me know in the chat. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll basically self-correct it as, as we go. Final thing just before we start. Uh, a lot of you know that all of my advertising revenue goes to charity. Every single penny of advertising revenue that I make from YouTube goes to charity. It always has. Uh, but right now, all of that money is going to help the crisis in Ukraine. So by watching this video, just those adverts popping up, uh, you are helping raise money for, for charities supporting what's going on in Ukraine. So yeah, big thank you to you. Right, okay. Let's make a start. Let's give it a go. Now, as I mentioned, I've done a lot of the setup for us. And let's have a look at my board. The first thing I want to show you is my chosen objective card. So in the solo game, you get six of these objective cards and you choose three of them. Now, I've chosen these two because if I get my student up on the blue street to space eight, then I score this objective and I score this objective as well. OK, so these two synergize quite well together. Now, the blue street is also about getting knowledge and also getting books, which is why I have chosen this one as my third objective. So I think these three synergize quite nicely. Uh, now, one disadvantage with choosing two objectives with the same icon is you also get bonus points at the end of the game based on how many different types of objectives you've completed. So even if I do all these three objectives, it's only two different types because these two are the same type. Um, and basically, the harder the objective, the more points you're going to get. So that, that's what we started with. I've also chosen my starting tiles. I did all of this beforehand. So I've got three knowledge. I've got two coins. I've got one clay. I don't start with anything unlocked. But what I did start with is I started with my student on the blue street, two spaces forward because of these objective cards. OK, so that that's what I uh, that's what I decided to do. The Automa has four different difficulty levels. And because I've not played this game for a couple of months, probably even three months, um, and I've not played the solo mode before, I'm playing on the easiest difficulty level. There are four difficulty levels. We're playing on difficulty level one today, which means the Automa uh, actually starts with one starting tile. Now, I can't find the tile that they've chosen uh, to start with. It was just one tile at random. But they've basically flipped this over, and they've got three resources. So let me just tell you quickly about the Automa. The Automa doesn't have resources in the way that a human player does. So the three resources in this game are clay, knowledge, and coins. What the Automa has is the Automa has this resource track, and this tracks how many resources they have. Every resource for the Automa is basically a generic resource. So the Automa has three resources, and whenever it spends either coins, clay, or knowledge, or whether it gains them or spends them, you move the marker up and down on this track. Okay, so that's that. 
We also have these priority tiles. This is the, the one which is at the top. This is always the top priority tile. But then these three were shuffled and placed randomly on there. Uh, and they are going to be used to determine tiebreakers when we're, when we're working out what the automer is going to do, basically. What else have we done to start with? We've done that. We've done the starting tiles. We've done that. Now, I'm covering up some of these spaces here in the graveyard because in a two-player game, certain spaces are not used. And I don't think the rulebook tells you to do this, but I like to cover them over just so that they're, just so I can't see them. We've got the four characters out. That's been done. Um, the automate also gets three objective cards. Now, these objective cards are worth a fixed number of points at the end of the game. It do, it's not trying to achieve them or anything like that. They are basically just fixed points at the end of the game, depending on what difficulty level you're playing with. Right. We're now going to jump in and we're going to play and we're going to make a start. We do have the marbles for a two-player game. So I'm going to give these a shuffle and we'll put them into the synagogue straight away. And I'm going to try and, 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 and mix them up a bit. Because one of the things with this game is if you pour them all into this corner, they're all going to come out at this bit. So you really need to sort of spread them out a bit. So I'm probably going to divide them into two hands and drop them in like that. Okay, well, there you go. That, that was random. I've also got, uh, is it this one? Yeah, so we've got we've got this camera angle um, showing you this at a 90 degree turn. Um, yeah, so you do that at the start of each round. And we've done these three tiles at random as well. Yeah, all the setup is done. Right, so each round consists of seven phases. The phase first phase is the refresh phase, which you don't do in the first round of the game. The second phase is the golem movement phase. So each player will have to move their golems forward along the street because they start getting a bit out of control. Uh, and that is done in player order, and it is this number here, based on the strength of the golems, plus the number for the current character, unless you have upgraded one of the legs. So basically, the automa has to spend four movement points for its golems. It has two golems on the board already. The position of the golems are determined by its uh, priority tiles here. Um, so it's basically getting four movement points. Now, the rules are, there's a, there's a whole page of stuff. So the solo rules are actually a completely separate manual because they're quite big. It's what, eight pages? Yeah, eight pages. But the back is a really useful reference card, reference sheet, uh, with basically all of the stuff on there. So whenever you're moving golems, it, if there's a golem laying down, it will move that one first. Leftmost golems, then coloured strategy tiles order. Strategy tiles, that's what they're called. So at the moment, the automa has a golem here and a golem here. They're both leftmost. So it goes with whatever the priority tile is, or the, the strategy tile, which is this one. So its second movement point will be this one, its third movement point will be this one, and its fourth movement point will be that one. There you go. I also now get four movement points, which I have to spend. Well, my blue student is already here, so I think that's a safe move. Um, now, because I'm wanting books, I'm tempted to leave this golem here and try and work there. So I'm going to move that one two spaces forward as well. My golem is now officially called Gary. Is he? Okay, right, thank you very much. Which one? This one. This one can be called Gary. And this one can be called Gertrude. There you go. So we've got Gary and we've got Gertrude. We are going to name all of our golems for this game. This will be fun. <laughs> um, right, now we do phase three. Phase three is the action phase, which is the bulk of the game, really. And in the solo game, the automa always goes first. You can see this by the turn order track here. Now, what we do for the automa is we have a set, set of automa cards. These have been shuffled. And we pay, take the first one and we put it here. Now, the first thing is... On the left hand side, you see that brown bar, we look at the number at the top. We are playing on difficulty level one today, and that brown bar has two plus, which means nothing happens. But if we were playing on normal difficulty level, which is difficulty level two or higher, then basically the autumn is going to get a bonus straight away at the start of the round. So it doesn't get that. The next thing is, does it take a marble or does it place its rabbi? Now, because the marble column has something in it, it's gonna do a marble first. Um, if that column wasn't occupied, it would do a rabbi action first, but it is going to do a marble action first. So what we do is we go through this priority sequence here to work out which marble it is going to take. And the first condition is, is he's going to take a marble from the action that has the most marbles. So if we take another look here, this is the one with the most marbles. So it's going to take one of these. Now we need to determine which one within that is it going to take? So we go to the next one. Now, this is actually now just a tiebreak criteria for the first one. And this icon here means it's going to take the rightmost one 
based on what the current character is. So if we look at the main board, the character for this round is yellow and blue. So the right hand one is blue. So can it take a blue marble from here? Yes, it can, which is what it does. So it takes a blue marble from here, puts it there, and now it's going to do the mirror action. So whenever it does the mirror action, it basically spends one coin, which for it is just one resource, and it's going to mirror one of the other actions. So let me just double check this in the rule book, because as I say, I've not played through this solo mode before, so I will need to just check a couple of things as I do them. And the mirror action says, when the automa should perform the mirror action, it will complete a work action, providing it has two or more standing golems. It does have two or more standing golems, so it's going to mirror the work action. Um, otherwise, it would have completed the action matching the uppermost strategy tile. And it never pays three coins to advance on the study track. Okay, so it's basically, it's mirroring the work action. Okay, so the work action is up here. Uh, and whenever you mirror an action, you actually mirror it with the strength of... Oh, I got this wrong earlier on. <laughs> um... Is it the strength of the mirror action or the strength of the original action? I think it's the strength of the original. Uh, yeah, whatever it is, I got it wrong earlier. So I just want to double check. The chat's probably shouting at me to remind me which one it is. Mirror action. Here we go. With the value of the mirror action. Right, okay. So the value of the mirror action is four. So it's going to do the work action with a value of four which means it will try to activate as many golems as it can uh, with a discount of four, but it will never pay more than two. So what that means is, if we have a look at this, the cost of activating three golems would be five with a discount of four, would have been one. So it would have activated three golems if it had three golems. It doesn't, it only has two golems, which is costing three, and it's got a discount of four. Now, whenever the Automa does an action, which has got more discount than it can actually use, it actually gains the additional in, so, uh, in resources. So in this case, it's going gonna, it's gonna to activate two golems. That's going to cost three. Because it's got a discount of four, it actually gains a resource. Okay. Now, that's not how the human player works, but that's how the automa works. So it's now going to perform actions with both of these. This one is easy. We just lay it down, and it gains three clay, which means it gains one, two, three resources. This one is a little trickier. So it's going to gain a book with a discount of three. Now, whenever it gains a book, we look at the card and this, these numbers here, one, four, two, three, five, is basically a random sequence of numbers that tells us which book it wants to buy. So we look at the book track over in the library and these, just imagine that these are numbered, one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna take the first one first, if it can, and it can because it's getting a discount of three, and this only costs two. So it gains another resource and it takes this book. Now, this is the first book it's taking. Uh, and the first book it takes, I believe, always goes in the leftmost column. Now, you'll notice on the Automa's board, this tile has already been flipped over. So if this was a human play, you'd probably think it's going to put it in there. But I don't think it does. I think whenever it takes a book, it always takes it, just puts it in the leftmost, yeah. The column containing book cards of the same colour or the leftmost empty column. Right, so it's putting this book in here uh, and it's getting this particular bonus here. Uh, right, so that bonus is it will immediately either move one of its golems forward or one of its golems back. So if there is a choice of effects from a book card separated by the slash, the automa will choose the effect as follows. If the automa has a golem in sections 8 to 10, no. Uh, if one of the effects cannot be performed, choose the other effect. Well, both can be performed. Oh, we've got a Loki. No, Loki's decided not to come in. If there is still a choice, choose either the left or right effect as indicated by the topmost left marble or right marble criterion shown on the most recently played Automa card. Okay. That's interesting. <clears throat> so let's have a read over that again. Loki, are you going to come and help me work this out? Yeah, come on. Yeah. He always comes in 15 minutes after I start our live stream. Probably because I'm talking. He probably thinks there's people in here. There's nobody in here. It's just me. It's just me. So if there is still a choice, choose either the left or right effect as indicated 
by the topmost left marble or right marble criterion shown on the recently played Automa card. Right, I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it means on that card the right marble is higher than the left marble, so it's doing it's doing the right hand option, which means it's going to move one of its golems back. Is that right? <laughs> Paul has my Jaffa cakes. Yes. Now David Digby is in the is in the chat. Hopefully he can help me with that if I get it wrong. Um, but let's just have a look at the section on moving golems. Um, yeah. So I think it's going to move a golem backwards. When the Ottoman moves golems backwards, carry out the following steps for each point of movement: move the laying golem that is furthest right in any district. They are both right. Move the standing go right. If tied, the district which matches the lowest coloured strategy tile. So that would be yellow, followed by red. So I think it's moving this one back. And whenever you move back, I think you stand it up. I think that's right. When a golem moves to those sections, it will, yeah. If there's ever choice between moving forwards or not at all, it will choose to move a laying golem, but not move a standing golem. Okay. If it's wrong, let me know in the chat. Um, but I think that's right. I think it's going to move a golem backwards and it moves, because they were both rightmost, it goes in reverse order. So it's moving that one back. And every time a golem moves, I believe you stand it up. That was the bit which wasn't 100% clear in the original rule book. It was clear um, in the golem movement phase, but it actually applies to everything else. If a golem was laying down, stand it up whenever it moves. Yeah, okay, so I think that's right. I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody... <laughs> Simone says, yeah, you can't help too much because, uh, yeah, it's, it's similar to me. I've not played this game in so long, and you probably developed this solo mode like a year ago. Um, but hopefully that's right. Hopefully that is right. It's taken a book. It goes in there. That was the instant benefit. Then it gains two points, and it gains a resource. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, all golems stand up when they move. I thought so. And David has said, that's right. Okay, we got that right. Excellent. So it's done that. It's chosen the marble action. It chose to mirror. It mirrored the work action. It activated both of its golems. It bought a book. The library shuffles down. There you go. Now, the Automa uh, is one of those things that the first time you play it, like me right now, you are going to have to look a couple of things up. But I think once you get used to it, it all makes sense and it is all logical. And the back page of the solo guide is this, which is really, really useful. Um, so I'll, I'll try and keep that handy. It's my go. Now, I have free choice of whether I want to place my rabbi or whether I want to take my marble. Uh, and my main objectives for this turn are, well, I don't know, really. I mean, do I want to bother with my artifacts? Because the artifact is a whole extra part of the game that's quite powerful if you can get it working, but it requires gold. Um, and I don't know whether I actually want to bother with my artifact. And the question is, do I want to bother with the character? Because if I want to bother with, with the character, I need to be taking yellow and blue. And that's actually quite nice as well, because that moves me up the study track. And the study track will allow me to have more books in a column. More books in a column is good because of this. So I'm thinking I do, but you, the trick with, one of the tricks with this game is you look at this character and if you manage to take the marbles of the corresponding colours, then that's great and you get a bonus, but you don't want to get locked into it. You don't want to think, oh, well, I definitely need to do that because actually there might be a different thing. Um, yeah, there might be a different thing to do. So is there a different thing I want to do or do I want to take yellow and blue? Because this, the way that these tiles have come out is interesting. The way that the marbles have come out is interesting. The mirror action is actually the most powerful one. Hmm. I mean, I could take white. White counts as a wild card for the purposes of the characters, but if you take a white one, you don't get to move any of your students. And that's the disadvantage with the white marbles, because I really want to be moving these students forward as much as possible. I could place the rabbi. I could try and get a space there, like this one will allow me to build another golem. Um, 
and then move one forward or move one. Yeah, we also want to work. I do want to work and I want to do, I think I want to work there. I definitely want to work here. Absolutely want to work here. Hmm. Yeah, so if I work here, that's either going to be this one or it's going to be this one. We could go for the blue and the yellow. Yeah, let's, let's do it. I'm going to take this blue marble here, okay? I am going to spend one coin and I am going to mirror this action, but with a value of three instead of two. So the first thing is I get three knowledge. Uh, right, so I've got six knowledge. That's pretty good. I can then do one blue upgrade and I can take one book. Now, with all of this knowledge, um, I can basically take whichever book I want. So I need to look at, and I can take, I can upgrade whichever one of these I want. If I really wanted to, I could upgrade this one. And that, oh, that that's pretty awesome, isn't it? How much have I got? I've got six. Hmm. Okay, and I'm going to need some for when I work. Yeah, so I'm not getting the coins. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm tempted to upgrade. I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go cheap. I'm going to spend two knowledge, and I'm going to upgrade this one. Go cheap or go home is what I say. And then I'm going to buy a book, and I'm going to buy this book because it's the cheapest book. So this only costs me two knowledge. And I am going to slot it in here. So what that gets me is um, I can immediately do an upgrade at a discount of minus two. Ooh, so I'll spend another one knowledge and I'll upgrade that. Um, and then every time I slot something in, I now get all of the bonuses. So I get a coin, a clay, a clay, and a knowledge. So one coin, uh, two clay, and one knowledge. Okay. And I think that's it. I've bought a book. I am one sixth of the way to completing <laughs> my objective. Okay, right. That is the end of my first turn. Uh, have I used the effect of the blue marble? I haven't. Thank you very much. Now, every time you take a blue marble, you move your blue st your student forward once on the blue street. Yellow marble, move the yellow student. Red marble, uh, red student. Black marble, move any two different students. And the white marble, you don't get to move one. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Next, it is now the Automa, so what we do is we reveal another card. Now, at this point, he's, uh, this, this has happened. Okay, so first of all, the brown column has a 1+, plus, which means it is going to get that bonus. Now, I need to look at what that bonus is. That bonus is... If the Automa has 0 stroke 1 golems present in the districts, it builds 1 without any discount. It doesn't. It has two. Okay, so it, it doesn't do anything, but otherwise it would have done a, a build. Right, now the next thing to look at is we have a marble column. So you might think it's going to do a marble action next, but it's not. Because if you look here, these two cards together have made a rabbi symbol. What that means is that overrides this and it's actually going to place a rabbi next. And when it places a rabbi, it's going to place it in this order. So 4, 1, 3, 2, 5. If you imagine that these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then it's going to basically do that. So it's going to place a it's going to place its rabbi and it's going to put it on space number 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that space isn't available in a two-player game. So I'm just going to check this. Rabbi action. Okay, so important. If the automa has one golem in sections 8 to 10, then it will actually choose to place its rabbi on an action that will kill a golem. It doesn't have that, so it places its rabbi on the action tile shown in the shown uppermost on the card. The indicate the numbers indicate the position of the action tile. If the tile indicated by the uppermost number on the automate is already occupied by another player or not present, then basically go to the next one. So the next one is number one. So it's going to go onto that tile there. And then it's going to perform that action. Now, this is a really weak tile to come out in round one um, because what it does is it moves its leftmost student forward one space. Well, all of its students are leftmost. 
So I think it uses its strategy tile. So I think it's going to move the blue one. Let me just check that. Uh, which student moves forward? Leftmost student, coloured strategy tile. Yes. And then it gains points equal to the position of its leftmost student, which is one. So that's why it's a very weak tile to come out in the first round of the game. There you go. Right. Okay. So uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it, it's done a rabbi action and it got one point and it moved a student. Right. Okay. My go. If I want that character, I want to take a yellow one. Um, so I could do this. I could take one clay. Um, I could do a red upgrade and I could build a golem. Is that build a golem? No, that's not build a golem, is it? It's the iconography. I always get confused with the iconography on the golems, whether that's build one or activate one. I thought it was build one. Yeah, create one golem. Right, okay. So I could do that. Take one clay, do an upgrade, and do a golem. Or I could take this one, and that would allow me to do a mirror action of anything with a strength of two. And that would allow me to activate both of my golems. I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to take this one from here. So it's yellow, which means I move my student forward on the yellow street which is here so this one moves forward one uh, and then i pay one coin and i am going to mirror the same action as i've just done here okay but with a value of two so i gain two knowledge no 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 no, not that one this one this is the one i'm going to do i'm going to mirror the work action i'm going to activate two golems which normally costs three but i get a discount of two so i spend one knowledge and I activate both of my golems. So this one is I take a book at a discount of three. Now that means that's going to be free and that's going to be free. And I could put it in here. What's that? That's instantly build a golem with a discount and spend a couple of golems. That is gain knowledge. Do we want to build another golem? Hmm. I quite like the idea of getting, then again, we've got more yellow on now. Oh, which one to take? I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm going to take this yellow one. So it's actually free because it would normally cost three, but I get a discount of three. Um, I can't slot it in here because this column is already uh, showing on my playboard. This column has already been now assigned to blue cards, so I'm going to put it in this one. So I immediately build a golem with a discount of one clay. So I spend two clay to build this golem, which increases my strength by two. Um, now, if I put this golem in a district which I'm not in, then it costs three. If you want to put it in a district where you have already got a golem, you pay an extra three clay for each one that's already in that district. So I'm going to put it there. Uh, and I can basically move two back or two forward. Um, Luke says he never sees anybody pass in this game. Yes, passing is one of those things in this game which is rare, but there are certain times when you could do it. And I was actually considering it at that point, because then that would get me a free re-roll effectively. Now, what do we want to do with the two movement? Ah, now this is this is interesting. I have a rules question. I haven't activated this yet. So for anybody who really knows this game, the rules question is, I was about to activate this one and this one. But by activating this one first, I've bought a book. That book is going to potentially move the position of this one could i then activate that one in the new position like could i move it here and then activate where it is because if i can do that that's actually really powerful like really powerful Yeah. 
Yes, you can move it and activate it in the new position. Thank you. I, I was I was thinking why why couldn't you do that? But I think I can. Oh, this this is this has thrown everything out now. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move it two spaces forward. Okay, right. Now we slot it in and we now get all of the effects of this column. So I gain two points and I get another point and a coin. Coin. Right. We're done. We now lay it down. So I've done two work I've activated two of my golems. Now I've got a third golem. Where did I get the third one from? <laughs> Did I get the third one from the book? Yeah, I got the third one from there. So I could have actually activated the one that I just built. But I don't I don't think I can retrospectively go back and pay more favour. Uh, make favour? More knowledge. To then suddenly do a third one. I don't think I can do that. Right, that is my go done. Time for a drink of water. For those people tuning in who just want to know my opinion of this game, I think it's great. Um, yeah, it's a great game. Really, really good game. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a definitely a, it's a solid Euro game. It's an absolutely pure Euro game, but it's very solid. This is my first time playing the solo rules. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's certainly quite interesting. And I like the way that the Automa is simulating an AI and it doesn't seem overly complex. I've played, I've played quite a lot of solo modes where the Automa was too complex for me. This one at the moment just feels at the upper limit of what I find comfortable in terms of complexity. But the chat's helping me, which is good. Um, yeah, so I think we're done. I think it is now the Automa's go. So the Automa is placing a marble because like in a multiplayer game, your three actions have to be one rabbi and two marbles. It just depends in which order you take them. So let's have a look. It's, uh, does it get a bonus? No. It's going to take a marble. Right. First of all, that icon there means complete the work action using either the work action line or the mirror action line, brackets, only if it has at least one standing golem. It does have a standing golem. Yeah, because... It, it used it, and then it moved it. Oh, it was here, wasn't it? And it moved it back, so it stood up. Okay, so it's going to complete the work action using either the work action line or the mirror action line, as long as it's got at least one standing golem, which it does. So it is going to work. So does it take this red one, or does it take the white one? Let's go down. First of all, next criteria is the one with the most things in there. They've both got one. Next, it tries to take black. Can't take black. Next, it takes the right-hand character one, blue, can't take blue. Then it takes the left-hand character one, yellow, can't take yellow. Next, it takes white. <laughs> so it's taking white, uh, which means it doesn't move any of its students forward, but it does mean it has completed that character, uh, the, the, the request of that character, which is for a yellow and a blue marble. Um, okay, so it, it's doing this, which means it spends a coin, to do the work action with a value of one. It has one golem, so it activates one with a discount of one, it doesn't pay for it, it lays that down and it builds a golem. So it's going to build um, it's going to build this golem, it's going to build it here for a cost of three clay, two clay, because they've got a discount, so we move its resources down two, that moves its strength up by two. And I think that's it. That then lays down. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, the solo mode, as Luke says, it's got an extra set of rules, but it's a lot of repetition in the rules, which means once you've played it and you get used to it, it will flow a lot quicker. I think that is the Automa's turn done. It's taken two marbles, it's done the rabbi, it's built a golem, it's put it here. It is now my go, and I have to place a rabbi. So I'm going to place it on here, uh, or do I put it on here? Oh, that's interesting. I was going to put it on here, but actually I think I'm going to put it on here. So I'm going to put it on here, and we're going to kill this golem, because it's run off down the street. This is, uh, this is Gertrude, wasn't it? Who's this one? This is Graham. Okay, so Gertrude is, I'm afraid, going to get killed. Um, 
So yeah, so Gertrude is going to go down here. You're saying earn one money. Why, why earn one money? What have I missed? I don't know what I've missed. Okay, let, let me know what I've missed with the earning one money. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, let me let me know what I've missed. I am going to kill this golem. Now, whenever, whenever you kill a golem, you can go onto one of these spaces here. And <clears throat> I could go on the one that moves moves a student forward. Oh, I think we want to do that. Now, some of these other bonuses are really nice, but I think I'm going to go on the one that moves a student forward. We're going to move that one forward to there. Okay, I missed nothing. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, if I earn money, then I can pay the three at the end of the round. Yeah. No, that's all right. I got a plan. I have a plan. Uh, and, and, oh yeah, I can now take two resources. So I could now... Yeah, okay. That's the thing. Whenever you use that bottom action space, you can kill a golem and take... Is it two of one type of resource or is it any two resources? Let me just look that up. <clears throat> These are all printed in the back of the rule book, and it is. Oh no, it's not printed in the back of the rule book. Yeah, that that was a quirk with the rule book. Is this bottom action space is not actually explained. They've missed that out of the rule book. But I think it's two gold, two clay, or two knowledge. And I think you're right. If I take the two gold, I can actually use the character tile. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the two gold. Thank you very much for the reminder. So I'll take the two gold. There you go. It, it is, thank you very much, Chuck. It is two of one of those three things. Right, we're done. That is the end of the action phase. Now we do turn order. Turn order is determined by the order of the rabbis in here, so it doesn't change. And then we do the characters. So, um, the automa has met the requirements of the character, as have I. Okay, so let's work out what the automa does first, because I know what I'm going to do. So the automa, it says, um, influence characters. If the automa has the correct marble combination, and if the resource marker is in the red area, it will take three coins. So if you look at its resource strike, there is this red area here. If its resource marker was in that red area, it would not activate the character, and it would take three coins instead. As it is, the resources are not in the red area, so what it will do is it will pay to take the benefit. In which case, it pays three resources, one, two, three, and it takes the benefit, it moves two spaces up on its study track. Okay, I'm also going to do the same because I've got the blue and yellow combination. I'm going to pay three gold. I am also going to move up two spaces on the study track. That means I can now have two books in each of these columns. That's the characters done. We now do phase six, which is income. You get income from four different places. First of all, you get income from your study track. The automa gets one. You get income uh, in terms of points from your golem strength tra track. Two points from there. Uh, it gets income from any artifacts that have been completed, which is none. And then gets income based on the position of the students, which is none. For me, oh, it also gets, oh, I've done the one. Yeah, for me, I get one knowledge for that. I get two points for this. Um, I don't have any artifacts, but my students here, I get two knowledge and a point. This student is doing really well. Okay, so that's income done, and then both players can do an upgrade. Now, whenever the automa does an upgrade in phase six, what you do is you work out what's going to get it the most points. Okay, it will upgrade red if it has built the most golems. It's built one golem, blue if it's got the most columns filled with a book, where well, it's got one of those, and artifacts, depending on how many artifacts it's completed. So right now it's a tie between red and blue. So what we do is we look at the strategy tile and it's been randomly determined that blue is the strategy tile that's at the top. So it's gonna do a blue upgrade. And then what it does is it always does uh, lowest one first. So it's basically gonna upgrade this one by spending two resources, which is in effect two knowledge. Oh, I killed a golem. Thank you very much. I always forget to do that. There you go. Thank you. My point is down there. 
It was one of the things that I spoke to Tom Heath about this yesterday, and he said, don't forget, whenever you kill a golem, you always lose one strength point. And I was like, yes, Tom, I must remember that. <laughs> and then I went and forgot it. Um, so yeah, I think that's right. It's, it's upgraded. It was either blue or red. It was blue because of the strategy tile, and it's upgraded that one. Right, me, I can do one upgrade. Which upgrade do I want to do? That is a good question. Now I have four knowledge. I mean, this is, it's not free, is it? No, I still have to pay for it. I just get to do one. Yeah, upgrade one development of your choice, paying the normal cost as explained under the marble action. So I still have to pay for it. Hmm. I'm going to have to take this at some point. Ah, now, I need to be careful here because of my golems. No, my golems are under control. We're all right, so I don't need any knowledge now to keep my golems under control. I think I might do it. I'm going to have to do it at some point, so I am spending four knowledge to upgrade this one. Okay, I've got three of those unlocked already. That's, that's not bad. That's three of the menorahs. Yeah, Gary's on the blue... Yeah, this is Gary. Gertrude is unfortunately resting in peace. Uh, Graham is up here. Graham is the, is the baby. Graham's newborn. He doesn't really understand what's going on at the moment. We keep trying to teach him, but he's not listening. Right, so now we're going to phase seven. So basically, you now have to look at the position of each of your golems on the track to see if they are ahead of your student. And if they are, you have to pay knowledge. So uh, Graham, Graham is fine. Graham's under control. Gary's under control. But the Automa's golems, this one is out of control by one, and this one is out of control by one. So the Automa has to pay two resources. Now, one thing I found a little unusual with this game is the Automa's resource track goes down to minus five. Um, and I don't actually know why the, why the rules are like this. Uh, <laughs> they obviously work, but I think the Automa can actually go into negative resources and it only starts to lose points when it goes beyond minus five. So I think this is right, and again, if it's not right, somebody in the chat tell me, um, but it, it can spend resources even though it goes down to minus five. So at the moment, for example, it was on one, and it had to spend two resources, so it spends two resources. It's now got minus one resource, and as I say, I'm not sure why the track is minus five to zero and not just zero. And I'm just curious as to see why it's like that. We are done. We now go to round two. There's only four rounds in the game. So you can probably play a solo game of this in about 45 minutes. Obviously, I'm taking longer today because I'm taking my time to explain it. And I'm actually learning it as I go. Uh, but that is Golem Control done. So we go to round one. Sorry, round two. Phase one is the refresh phase. Now, we didn't do this in round one because you don't do the refresh phase in round one. We gather all of the marbles. And we're going to drop them into the synagogue. So again, I'm going to shuffle them, divide them into two, and kind of drop them in like this. There we go. So that's how, that's how those have come out. Uh, we discard the action tiles used in the previous round, so they're gone, never to be seen again. You only see them again in a four-player game, um, because you run out after three rounds in a four-player game, so you have to go round and do them uh, again. Okay, let's just remind myself of what these are. Take a book, and you don't pay the cost at the top, you only pay the cost at the bottom. Do any upgrade with a discount of three, and any resources can be spent. And I think this, see, this was the confusing icon, because I think that was the icon for Create a Golem, but I don't think that one is. I think that is Activate a Golem. Yeah, take the neighbourhood action tile adjacent to one of your golems, either standing or laying down without activating it. Yeah, okay. So that's what those are. Um, right, what else did we do? We removed the leftmost book from the library. It's gone. Oh, in fact, they should have slid down anyway. I, d I forgot to do that. Uh, that character's gone. We can get rid of that character. Just flip it face down. And that's it. That is phase one done. Right, so phase two, golem movement. 
It's four, seven. OMG. Seven movement points. Right, well, it's moving that one first because it's the leftmost one. Let me just check that because we've got some laying down now. Will it always prioritize a laying down golem? Uh, which golems to move forward? Yes, so it moves laying down golems first. So it will move this one in preference to this one. And this is the leftmost one. So it moves that one first. That's one. Two. Three. Four. We now have a tie break. Five. Six. And seven. So it favours ones that are laying down first, then the leftmost ones, then the coloured strategy tile order. So that's its seven movement points. Wow, they are completely out of control. Okay. Uh, my go. I have six movement points to spend <laughs> between my golems. Right, well, I can move this one too. That's fine because that's safe. Yeah. Okay, this is interesting. Now, you only get the Amphora when your student progresses. Here, ooh, are we going to rush this to the end? We could go for here. This is a super cheap book. Oh, I like that. Yes. So how many have I spent? I've spent two out of six. So three, four, five, six. Okay, there's my six movement. Paul loses control of his workers. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. We've done the golem movement. Now it is actions. Okay, so we need to discard the three action cards that we used last round. We won't need those again, so they can get disappeared. And what have we got now? We have this. So first of all, there's a bonus. If it has zero or one golems, it doesn't, it has three. So it's choosing a marble action. It's the one with the most marbles in, which is the mirror action. So the tiebreaker is it wants to take a blue one if it can, because that's the character on the right, it's blue. There isn't a blue one here. Uh, it takes the one on the left, which is red. There isn't a red one here, so it takes the black one. Okay, so it's taking the black marble, which means it moves two different students. So again, it will always move the leftmost one. Tiebreaker is blue and then red, so it moves that one. And then it moves that one. So that's its two student moves. Um, and now it is getting to perform the mirror action again. Yeah, I think it's performing the mirror action. So it spends one coin to do the work action with a discount of three because there was three marbles in here so it's doing the work action with a discount of three now it has three golems on the board it will try to activate all three if it can cost of activating three golems is five it's getting a discount of three and it will never pay more than two resources so it is going to pay two resources so it's down to minus four resources again if you know why it goes from down to minus five instead of just zero let me know because i am a bit confused but it is now activating all three golems um does it matter which order you do them in because it did for me which golems work right most golem first and then strategy tile order okay so it's this golem first this is the one that's going to work first but it is doing three of them so it lays that one down uh, and it's going to do this. What is that? Oh, let's have a look. This is tile number seven on the blue street. Um, move your marker one step down on the study track to earn three victory points and move any one student forward one step. Okay, so that's what it does. So it moves down one on the study track. It gains three points. One, two, three. And it moves one of its student forward. They're all tied for the leftmost, so it does blue first. There you go. Okay, so that's that golem done. Then it does um, strategy tile order. Yeah, so it's now going to do the red one in preference to the yellow one, which is this one, which moves one student forward. 
which is going to be either one of these two, and it's going to be the one on the red street, which is this one. Okay, and then it does this one, which is to spend four gold to move two workers. Now, at this point, it can't do this. The, I think this is what's called a failed action, because it needs to spend four resources, and it's already on minus four. So this is the bit that I'm not sure about. Uh, let's just have a look. Failed actions. When the automa can only partially complete an action, it does as much as possible and receives no compensation for anything it cannot take except resource discounts as described above. When the automa would complete an action that provides no benefit, either from a rabbi action, a neighbourhood tile or a work action, it does not complete the action and instead earns two victory points. So, I might need help from people who know the solo game here. At the moment, the Automa uh, is doing the work action. It's activating the three neighbourhood tiles. It's activating this neighbourhood tile, but it doesn't have the four resources. So, I'm not sure what it does because it says the Automa considers all basic resources to be the same. Every time the Automa should take or pay a resource, it instead moves its marker on the resource track. Anytime the marker should drop below minus five, it will lose one victory point. So, the Automa minus the points to do the action. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking, is it will pay the four coins, but that is effectively one coin and three points. And that's what a couple of people in the chat are saying. So that's what we're going to do. I hope that's right. If it's not right, then I apologise, but... We are going to move the marker down to minus five. And then for the three missing resources, it loses three points. I say, when I get it, I'm, I'm going to ask people afterwards as to, as to why it goes down by my, to minus five. They might be on BGG or something. And then it moves two, two students forward. So leftmost one first, and then tiebreaker is blue. Done. That's what we're going to do. I hope that's right. Um, the only other thing was that it doesn't do it and it gets two points but that's the bit I don't fully understand when the automa would complete an action that provides no benefit it will not complete the action and instead earns two points I don't know what that refers to but anyway we're done that is the automa's first action for round two so what am I going to do am I going to place a rabbi and grab a book, grab a free book. Well, it's not free. It means I don't have to pay the cost at the top. Oh, hello, Loki. Because there's another one here, which is... Oh, dear. Are you hungry? No, you're not hungry. You've got food. You just want attention. Um, so this is buy a book at a discount of five. And that's a super expensive book. So my plans were to buy that book using this action, which means I probably need to work. Now, the marbles needed this turn for the character are red and blue, and there is a red marble in the work action. Ah, but I don't have three, I don't have an extra, oh dear, what do you want? Look, come here. Look, I'm live streaming, okay, and you're there squeaking away. Yeah, I don't know if you can see him because he's all black. Yeah? Now, do you like this game? What do you think of this game? Marks out of ten? Eight? Eight and a half? Yeah. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? Now, don't, don't crawl across the board and mess everything up. Okay. Where were we? I got, I got distracted by cat. <laughs> uh, so, Alan says, like, when the AI can create a golem, but all of their golems have been created. Right, so literally, it can't get the benefit because it's already got all of the benefits. Thank you, Alan. I thought it was something like that. Okay, if, if I want to work with both of my golems this turn, oh no, you get a discount. Ah, yeah, no, no, that's right, yeah. It's going to cost me three, I get a discount of two, I don't have any knowledge. How do I get knowledge? Read a book. I need a way of getting knowledge. That's a way of getting knowledge. But it's only one. Oh, that's so terrible. But that one... 
Oh no, I'll tell you what I could do. I could take the rabbi action here, take that blue book, tuck it in here. That's going to get me lots of knowledge. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take the rabbi action. We're going to go on the top. So I buy a book and I only pay the cost at the bottom. Oh, I can't. I haven't got the two knowledge. <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. We could just activate one golem. It's a little inefficient. But if I activate one golem, I mean, I still can't do it. I still can't buy it because it's a discount of five. I don't have any knowledge at all. Wow. Which means it's going to have to be the white marble. Okay, so if I take the white marble, I get one knowledge, but then I can't do an upgrade and I can't take a book. So that's that's even more inefficient. Oh right, I'm 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 stuck. So let's look at other options. Can I mirror action? No, that's all really inefficient. Yeah, need to get knowledge. Yeah, need knowledge to get knowledge. Exactly right. Okay. I've got my eyes set on two specific things I want to do this turn. One of them is to activate this tile because it's super, super good. And the next thing is to buy that book and tuck it in here because that gets me knowledge. It moves my student forward. That's the book I want. But yeah, I don't have any knowledge. Now I can, I can get, if I get a gold, I can build this artifact and this artifact, the immediate benefit is get one knowledge. But I wasn't really going to bother with artifacts. But I might have to. I'm not going to get the book, am I? That's all right, because it's going to be free next turn. Oh, no, I can because of that. Hmm. Okay, right. Enough deliberating. Kill a golem. I don't want to kill a golem. <laughs> but you're right, I could. I could kill a golem and I could get loads of knowledge. But no. I'm going to take this blue marble here. Okay? So I'm doing this action. It's with an action value of two, so I get two gold, two, sorry, two coins. I then don't do the upgrade. I then spend three coins to buy a gold. Where's the gold? I haven't even taken it out of its Ziploc bag. <laughs> That's how much I didn't think I was going to do any artifacts in this game. Okay, so I get one gold. I'm going to put it on this artifact, which immediately completes it, which means I get one knowledge. Okay, I have one completed artifact. That is my turn done. So now we go to the Autumn's turn, turn number two. The rabbi icon is not, um, is not the, the rabbi image is not completed, so it's going to do a marble. It's going to take the leftmost one, which is red. Uh, it can take red, so it does take red, and it takes it from here. So this is the work action. Oh, it moves its... Did I forget to move my student? Yes. Thank you. Move my student. Um, so it's taken the red one. So it moves the stu its student on the red track, which is... I always think this is the red track, and it's not. This is the yellow track, the yellow street. This is the red street. It's a little bit confusing with the colours, because this looks like the green street, but it's actually the red street. And this is sort of more orangey, but it's actually the yellow street. A little bit confusing. Um... Anyway, so it's done that. It's taken the red marble from the work action, and it is doing the work action. Now, oh, it does not have any standing golems. Ah, now does it does it actually do the work action? Or is this the failed action? 
when the automa completes a work action, it activates as many golems as it can afford to, but they're all lying down. For each golem being activated, it chooses the rightmost standing golem. If tied, it activates. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Does it actually take that action? Look into the chat. Gary cannot die. No, no, Gary. Gary's doing really well. He'll die soon. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I'm not sure it can actually take a work action. And this is what I'm not sure what this strategy tile is at the top. Um, this is multiple choices, but it was it wants to take a red marble. I, 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 I've got the feeling it's not going to do anything. But you're suggesting you think it will choose the blue action. So the column with the yellow background shows the automa picks a marble from the synagogue, follows the criteria it wants to complete. Choose the marble matching the colour on the left of the character card for the current round, if already taken, the right. So the priority is it wanted to take a red marble. Um, we don't need to bother with the rest of the criteria because there was a red marble available. So there weren't still multiple choices. If there were multiple choices, you would use the strategy tile. If work is one of the possible choices and the automa has two or more standing golems, it will perform a work action. I think it's do I think it's doing nothing. I think because the card said it wanted a red marble. It doesn't say, unless I've missed it, that you ignore its request if it can't actually do the work action. So I'm just double checking. And it says, when the automa can only partially complete an action, it does as much as possible and receives no compensation for anything it cannot take. When the automa would complete an action that provides no benefit, which is, which is now, it does not complete the action and instead it earns two points. That's what I'm going to do. If it is wrong, if David is still in the chat, or if anybody else who knows it is still in the chat, let me know. But otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it takes a red marble because that's what it wants to take. But because it cannot do the action at all, it gets two points. Okay, that's what we're going to do. My go. I haven't placed my rabbi, but I now have the one knowledge that I need to be able to do that action. Oh, I still don't have the... I'm just going to activate one, aren't I? Which is going to be red, which is going to be that. Yeah, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to take the red marble. I'm going to activate one of my golems with a discount of one, which is going to be this one, to buy a book at a discount of five. I spend one knowledge to buy that one, which normally costs six, but I get it for five. I'm going to tuck it in here because I'm allowed to now have two books of the same column. Uh, so I immediately get one point and one knowledge. Alan is saying it sounds like it doesn't take any action and doesn't get two victory points because it didn't try to complete an action that didn't give it a benefit. Oh, okay. I'll come back to that in a minute. I then get a coin, I get a clay, I get another clay, I get another knowledge, and I move my blue student forward. Oh, and I forgot to move my red student forward, which is this one, not this one. <sighs> when the automa can only partially complete an action, it does as much as possible and receives no compensation for anything it cannot take. When the automa would complete an action that provides no benefit, yeah, it's interesting. It's um, it, it's all about the wording, and I'm not quite sure what that means. That provides no benefit. What what does that mean? Either from a rabbi action, a neighbourhood tile, or a work action, it does not complete the action and earns super. Yeah, that's the bit I'm going to need help on. I don't know if David is still in the chat. He's gone quiet, so maybe he's not. Um, but yeah, that bit, unfortunately, is not clear, and I don't know if it's been asked on BGG, but that's a perfect question to ask on BGG. Um, and we'll, we'll try and get an answer to it at some point. I am curious. So Chuck is saying, under marble selection, it says it'll take the work action, 
only if it has one standing goal. Yeah, I thought I'd read that. Where is that? Where is that? I'm sure I've read that somewhere. Ah, no, that is in that section. That's for that particular icon. I don't know if you can see, but it's it's there. For that particular icon, it says it will complete the work action using either the work action line or the mirror, only if it has at least one standing goal. But it's not that icon. It's It was this icon. Sorry, no, it was this icon. This was the icon. So it was choosing the marble, so it wanted to take a red marble. That's what it was focusing on. This round, it wanted to take the red, this action, it wanted to take the red, uh, the red marble. Oh, David's back. Right, so, David, it is the autumn's turn. The first priority thing on here is that symbol there, which means it is, it is choosing the marble, matching the colour on the left of the character card, okay? The symbol on the left of the character card is, is red, so it and there were two red there were two red marbles here okay so according to this it wants to take a red marble so it does that red marble means it can do the work action but all of its golems are lying down at which point we think that it doesn't do anything and the question is whether it gets two points or not so yeah if you know the answer to that then let us know. We've given it two points because uh, the failed action section was not clear. So we, we weren't sure whether to give it two points or not. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, follow criteria from top to bottom until it can choose something to perform, combining more if needed. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's the case because it specifically wanted a red marble. And the, the, I can't find anything in the rules to say that it would do something different. Or th this whole criteria section here is all about which marble it would choose, and it it, it was red. It, it was able to take a red one, so it, it just took a red one. Yeah, not one you can answer off the top of your head. No, it seems it seems like it's definitely an advanced question, but we're just going to have to go ahead and treat it as that's what it does. I can't see how you can change the criteria of what marble it would take based on what it is then going to do with that. It, it doesn't do that. Um, it chooses a marble. Once the marble has been chosen, you then go to the next bit. So we're going with the two points. That seems that seems fair. But the bit that's really not clear in the rulebook is that failed action section. I don't quite understand what that means. Anyway, that was it. That was me. It is now <clears throat> the rabbi action for the automa. I think we're done with me. Yep. So... Uh, it doesn't get the bonus. It's placing the rabbi on the first tile, which is that one. Um, so it's buying a book and it's not paying the top cost. Um, so it's taking the book from position three. The book from position three is going to cost it three resources. So this, this is the next bit. This is the next bit that I'm still confused by. It doesn't have any resources. It's in fact, it's got minus five resources and yet it is somehow able to buy a book that's going to cost it to, it doesn't pay that one, but it does pay this one and it doesn't have that one. So the way we played it before, and David, you can correct us if we're wrong, is it's going to pay the two resources. It doesn't have the two resources, so it loses two points, but it gets the book. Uh, the book gets it to knowledge, then it gets three points and another resource. One, two, three. And I know I've said this three times already, but I still do not understand at all why this resource track goes to minus five. And it, it's also not clear in the rules that it it, it, can't, it can spend what it doesn't have. It seems really weird. If it's on minus five resources, how it can spend three resources. But spending negative resources doesn't feel right. Yeah, it, it doesn't. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm asking if anybody else in the chat understands why the resource track goes down to minus five. This is the part I should have watched in Tom's playthrough. So I watched Tom Heath's uh, playthrough earlier on this morning. 
Um, and certainly in his playthrough for the first half hour, the Automa had loads of resources. So it wasn't really in the negative red section at all. Um, but yeah, there's, it just seems, just seems a bit odd. Anyway, we'll crack on. It's my go. I'm now placing my rabbi. What we're going to do... Oh, could that activate one that's stand, sitting down or standing up? Oh, if it can, I can do Gary again. Take the neighbourhood action adjacent to one of your golems, either standing or laying. Oh, we could activate Gary again. Gary's awesome. So we can do this again and get another book at a discount of five. Well, that's amazing. So let's do it. Let's activate Gary again. So I get a book at a discount of five. Well, I want a super big one. <laughs> yeah, let's take this one. This is awesome. Or do we take that one? Oh, they're both good. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah, so it cost me one. I can tuck it in here. I can immediately adjust my strength up or down by one. I'm going to adjust it. Hmm. Now, golems moving across here, is, is this bad? I think if your golems move here, you lose knowledge or points. Uh, golem movement. When a golem moves to sections 8 to 10, the automa... Well, oh yeah, that's, that's in the solo rules. Uh, golem movement. Yeah, so if it reaches the last sections, you must either pay a cost of victory points or knowledge to advance onto these sections. The advantage of these sections is that when you activate them, you get the points here. But I don't think it's worth it. I mean, it might be worth it here, because you're spending one point, and then when you activate it, you get two. But here, you're spending five points to get four. Does it go more into negatives if you flip it? Yeah, so this, this resource board is for the difficulty levels one and two. On difficulty levels three and four... Okay, the only difference is the red bar is slightly lower down. That's the only difference. So, pick one that earns me money. Oh yeah, because then, then I can do that. But actually, I'm thinking I might take the two money. I might take the three money this time. Can't remember what the hammer icon is. I think the hammer icon is you work with one and lay it down. Yeah. So, do we want to up it? Yeah, go on, we'll up it by one. And I get a coin. Okay, and then we took it in. And I get all of the benefits of this column. So I get uh, two points. I get uh, another point. I get a coin. Oh, I've got the coins now. Did I just get the coin? I think I might have just cheated and taken the coin twice. Let, let me know. <laughs> and then I'm going to spend a knowledge to increase my study level by one. We need another book. Yeah, I have a funny feeling I've just taken a coin twice. But the chat will let me know whether I've done that right or not. So yeah, we've got four books already. And I've already I've already done these two objectives. Is that in position eight? No, it's not. I've got to get it a bit further. Okay. I didn't cheat. Okay, so I've I've taken two coins. Where did I get the first coin from then? Oh, there. There was the first coin. And there was the second coin. That's it. I covered it over and got, got lost. Right, we are done. It is now turn order. Turn order does not change. Again, we're now halfway through. Influencing the characters. So the AI has not influenced the character. I have 
So I could absolutely buy this ability here, uh, which means I can move a golem one space forward or backwards, and then I can activate two of them. Oh, hello. So I could. I could move it there and I could activate those two for three coins, or I could take three coins. Oh, now, this is interesting. The problem is next turn, I've got five movement points to share out. And if that's there, this one will go one, two, three, four, five, ends up there. It might just work, but I have rushed these golems ahead very far. And I kind of want to keep this golem here because then I can keep doing this. And this is awesome. Hmm. Question, question. Do I want to do that or not? Because I can't activate this tile. This tile costs four knowledge. I don't have four knowledge. So, the choices are... Do I spend three coins to activate two of my golems? Or do I just take the three coins? I think at this point... I'm tempted to take the three coins. So I'm just going to take three coins. There you go. And that's that character done. Okay, next. Um, income. So we'll do the Automa's income first. It gets one resource for that. It gets two points for that. It gets the position, uh, it gets these artifacts, which is nothing, and it gets the position of its students. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So it's gone up to four resources. There you go. Um, <clears throat> my income is two knowledge. Two points, uh, one knowledge for this, and then my students is nothing for this one, nothing for this one, but this one is two knowledge and three points. One, two, three. Two knowledge. Right, okay, so that's, that's looking quite good now. I've got five knowledge, I've got three clay, and I've got six coins. That's my income done. We now get upgrades. So we'll work out the autumn as upgrades. Um, it wants to take a blue one. Because it hasn't got any artifacts, it's only built one golem. So it wants to take a blue one, and it will take the cheapest one, which is this one, which costs it four resources. It always takes this one in preference to this one. So it's now on zero resources. My upgrade... Well... I'm now... considering upgrading one of my artifacts, even though I said I wasn't going to do any artifacts. I'm considering upgrading. Hmm. So the way that artifacts work is you can upgrade it with one of these things, which means whenever you do the particular thing, it then it then triggers. Or you can make the income better. But there's only going to be one more income phase. So if I put that on there, could I do them in any order? Could I have done the upgrade before I do the income? Or, or is it afterwards? Because if I can do the upgrade first, that would be brilliant. Um, you receive all of the income. After you've done the income, you then upgrade a development of your choice. Okay, it's afterwards. I could remove the red streak, go on back one active, it build a new active one in the yellow streak. Oh, I could have done. Yeah, I could have moved that one back with that character, activated it and built a new one here. Yep, yeah, you're right, I could have done. But I took the money instead. So what we're going to do, which, which upgrade am I going to do? Oh, I could upgrade the study track. We're going to upgrade the study track. Cost me four. Well, there you go, there's all my knowledge gone. <laughs> okay, right. Next. 
uh, golems. Right, so this student keeps this one in check. This is one out of control, and this is one out of control, so the automat has to spend two resources. Uh, Gary's out of control, but... Uh, sorry, no, this is Gary. This is Graham. Graham's out of control by one, but Gary's okay, so I have to spend one knowledge. We're done. Round three. We are halfway through. Thank you for keeping me company with these playthroughs. And just as a reminder, now that we're halfway through, uh, this video, I've taken the day off work to do this video. Um, so a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making this possible. And if you want to help support the channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules and help me take more time off work to make more videos for you to watch. Um, but mainly, thank you for everybody keeping me company um, in this and helping me out with the rules. Chuck has said, I scanned through all of Tom's videos. He was freely spending resources into the negative, but he never hit the minus victory point for the AI. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Rasweetha, for the uh, the Patreon link. If that's how you pronounce your name, is it Rasweetha? Let me know if I pronounce your name right. Here we go. We're going in. What have we got? Oh, look at that. Wow. We have six on the Builder Golem action. Wow, okay, right, we've done that. Uh, next, character tiles. So we get rid of those three character tiles. We get three new character tiles. One, two, three. And we get rid of that card from the library. There we go. Right, two is Golem movement. So we have four plus one so we have five golems needing to be moved they're all laying down um these are the leftmost ones and it will favor red over yellow so it's one two three four five yep that's the five movement um my movement i also have five Ah. Yeah, so I'm going to move this one one, and I lose a point for doing that. Two, three, four, five. Okay, there's my five movement done. Next is actions, uh, and it is the Autumn first. So let's bin those cards, and off we go again for round three. What's it going to do? It uh, doesn't get a bonus. So here we go. Here's the work action. So at this point, it is doing the work action. If there is one or more standing golems, there is. So it's going to do the work action. The work action has white and red. So we're going to now go to the second tiebreaker. Uh, that one's ignored because we know that it's doing the work action. So it wants to take the left-hand one of the character, which is red. So it takes the red one. Okay. So it takes the red one puts it on there, it's doing the work action with value 2, which means it's going to get a discount, which means it's only going to activate two of its golems, because three golems would cost five with a discount of two, which means it's spending three, but it will never spend more than two. So it's activating two golems, cost three, with a discount of two, it's spending one resource. Okay, so one resource it is activating two of its golems. Time for a drink. Well, they're all here. <laughs> so I think we're looking at the strategy tile order. So activating golems. Um, which golems work? The rightmost one and then coloured strategy tile order. So it's the one in the blue first. This is the one that it wants to work first. Spends four resources. It only has... So it goes one, two, three, four. I still don't know if this is right, but that's what we're doing. It gets four points and one up on the study track. Okay, so it's done that one. Then out of these two, it would favour the red before the yellow. So that's this one. So it's going to do an upgrade with a discount of five. Now, the, as far as the red upgrade goes, the cheapest one is this one. So I think what it does, because we're not in the last round of the game. So I think it's going to do that one. And it's going to take the remaining ones from the discount as resources. One, two, three. Yeah, whenever it does an upgrade, it always does the cheapest one first. So that's that one. Okay, and that's that. So it's it's worked. It's done two things. I think that's right. 
Uh, being in the red does not affect spending resources to take actions. Thank you. It may suffer minus victory points if it keeps spending for balance. It just can't upgrade a development when in the red. It should only get minus one victory point if it can't pay, not minus one per resource. Oh, interesting. You see, I read that. That's, that's how I read the rules the first time. Anytime the marker should drop below five, it will lose one victory point. But that means if it's on minus five and it needs to spend eight, it just loses one point. And that seemed wrong. But if, if that's what you're saying, then it's owed a point. Um, yeah, anytime, yeah, it, it, to be honest, that, that wording could be taken both ways. So again, if David is in the chat, ping David, um, yeah, the wording here, it's not clear, it's ambiguous, it, it could be read two different ways. It could be read that, um, you know, if it's on minus five and it has to spend 20, it just loses one point. Or it could be read that when you, whenever you pay a resource, you move it. So if you pay 20 resources, say, let's say three, you move it back for one, move it back for another, move it back for another. So yeah, the, the rules question is, if you are on minus five and you have to spend three resources, do you lose three points or do you lose one point? I'm not 100% sure. If anybody wants to check BGG to see if that question has been asked, but it's ambiguous there, it, that could be read two different ways. Mark's popped in. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining, Mark. We are having some rules issues. Uh, we, are, we are definitely struggling with some clarity of how things work. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not enjoying the the parts of the rules where it, it's not completely clear what I'm supposed to be doing. That's the, that's the bit. Which, once you've got answers to these questions, then it's great. Um, it's just, yeah. I think there needs to be some kind of FAQ published for the solo game. That would be... Uh, that would be really good um, because at the moment I have a number of outstanding questions. Yeah, I know you're not an authority, David, but you're the best we've got at the moment. <laughs> so that that is the next question, which I would like, if anybody does know the answer to it, is if you are on minus five resources, if the Automer is on minus five resources and has to spend three, does it lose one point or does it lose three points? It doesn't seem fair that it only loses one point and gets effectively an infinite number of resources. But anyway, we, we've done a mixture in this game. We've sometimes lost one, sometimes lost one for each one. Um, and again, I still don't know why it goes down to minus five and not zero. That just seems very confusing. Where are we up to? Um, I've lost track of where we are because of all of the rules issues. We are, we've done the Autumn's first turn. We've taken a red marble. We worked and we laid down this one and we did that. So we're now laying down a second one. Yeah, I think it was doing two. Oh no, we've done two. We've done this and it did the upgrade. That was it. It did the upgrade and it got the resources back. So I think, I think we're done. Um, it is now my go. What do I want to do? Um, I think Gary might not be long for this world. I think Gary might need to go to sleep. Yeah. Although I would like him here. Here would be brilliant. Can I move him back one? Hmm. I also would like this. So there's, there's a few things that I want to do. I can have three books for each line now, which is good. Um, I've got six money. Six money is quite nice. That would allow me to do that if I take the right marbles. I mean, this is this is crazy. This is takes so much clay. Oh, we've got to do that, haven't we? Look at it all. It's all there for the taking. That's an action value of six. That's crazy. So if we do that with the other red one. Yeah, let's take it. Let's take the red marble. Let's remember to move my student on the red street first. So I get six clay. Right, now that gives us so many options. I can now do a red upgrade. And if I really wanted to, 
I could do this super big red upgrade, which cost eight. If I do, I don't have enough to build a golem. Ah, that's the problem. Um, we could kill Gary. Yeah, I think, I, th I think Gary needs to say goodnight. Sorry, Gary. But I'm going to do the upgrade. I'm going to upgrade the chest of my player board. So I'm going to upgrade the chest, which costs three. And then whenever I do, I can immediately bury a golem and I get double the benefit for burying it. So thank you very much, Gary. You've been really, really good to me. But it is time to go to sleep. And I'm feeling that this four point bonus here, doubled to eight, is pretty powerful. Although I do need knowledge to buy some books. I definitely need another two books before the end of the game. And I'm not getting much. Where is all my knowledge gone? I've spent it. So the question is, do I, do I get eight points or do I get four knowledge? Hmm. I'm going to go for the eight points. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to grab the eight points. 31. Okay, that's it. That is my action done. Okay, let's just see what the chat says. Um, John's here. Hi, John. The white arrow between columns seven to eight and onwards seem to imply that the golem can only move to the right. Uh, no, what that means is uh, whenever you do move to the right, you have to pay the cost. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't need the, it doesn't need the white arrow. The white arrow is not really needed. Oh no, it means when you're going from there to there, you have to pay the cost. If you move backwards, you don't have to pay the cost. So it's, it's a cost to move to the right. There we go. Gary's in the chat who's desperate for some sleep. <laughs> yes, when we said kill Gary, we don't actually mean you, Gary. We mean this golem here called Gary. So that was my first turn done. And now it is the Automa's second turn. So the second turn is doing a mar no bonus. It's doing a marble action. Uh, can it work? Yes, it can work because it has one standing golem. So it does. And there's only one marble there. So it takes that marble. It is a white marble, so it doesn't get to move. Uh, and it, it doesn't get to move its student. And it is doing the work action with a value of one. It's only got one standing golem, so it works with that golem. It doesn't pay anything. It lies that down and it basically takes another objective card and gets two resources. That's a nice and simple one. Okay, my go. Now, it's not going to take any more marbles. Now, this Luke said earlier on that he's never seen anybody pass. This is where I might want to pass because if I do, I get to put all of these back in. Oh, I forgot to build a golem. I was, I was going to build another golem there which means that moves up too. Sorry, I was going to do that. Um, yeah, so at this point, I might pass because if I do, I get to throw all of these back in and that will allow me then hopefully to do something different because I don't, I don't want them where they are. Um, now, my other options, oh, look at this one. What does that one do? I think that is move a golem four, activate it, and then for that round you don't have to pay. Move one of your golems up to four steps forward, activate it, and this round you don't have to pay knowledge to control your golems at all. Oh, that's really good. Totally doing that one. I think I should have gone first, because didn't I go on the top space last turn? Yeah, I think I should have done. Um, Put it on the power track. Which one's the power track? Yeah, anyway, that's what I'm doing. So I'm moving this one forward four. Okay. Um, I am then activating. Is it is it the one that I move or any of them? Move one of your golems up to four steps forward and activate it. Okay, so this one is being 
activated. I lose one point on the study track. Oh, now that's bad because that means I now can't have three books. But I do get three points and I can move one of my students forward. That student is moving forward, which gets me this, which is effectively another two points at the end of the game. Okay, happy with that? Yes. Now it did say move up to, does it move up to four? Yeah, change of plan. I'm not going to do that. Um, put that back. 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 I'm just going to move it two. And I'm going to activate it. And I'm going to buy a book at a discount of three. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to take this one. Because it's three. Okay. And I'm going to tuck it in here. So I immediately get one knowledge. And then I tuck it in because I can because of my level of my student study marker. So I get all of this. So I get a coin. I get two clay. Uh, I get a knowledge. I now move my student forward, which gets me the menorah. Uh, and I can spend one knowledge to move up on the study track. There we go. Much, much better. Yes, we like that. I've also now got five books. Five books is good. Okay, next it is the Automa, and the Automa is placing its rabbi. Oh, I've killed Gary. Yeah, thank you. Again, I said I'd always forget that. Um, so no bonus. It is placing the rabbi in position one. It can't go on position one, so it goes on position three, which is that one. It gets one gold. Oh, we've not done the gold for it yet. So, um, yeah, I don't know how the um, Automa works for artifacts. Um, which artifact to develop in rounds one to three? Oh, no, that's which artifact development to upgrade. Which artifact does it take? Nope, not that. Where is it? Buying gold. Here we go. The arrows show the order in which the Automa places the gold piece and development tiles. So it's... Yeah, it's there. It, put, it puts the first one on there. There you go. Which gets it one resource. Okay, right. Um, and then it gets one point for each of its completed artifacts, which is just one point. It's not very good. Not very good at all. Right, my go. I've already placed the rabbi, so I'm taking a yellow one. Or, or we could pass. I think I want to pass. I don't think I want another golem. Or do I? Because extra golems mean that you can share out the movement points. And because this student is here, I could end up with, this actually might work. I wasn't going to do this at all, but I think I am. I don't think I'm going to pass. I'm going to have a complete shift of strategy because of the way that these tiles have come out. And I'm going to take the yellow one, which means my student on the yellow street moves up by one. I gain five more clay. Yeah, if I pass, I get to drop all but one of the marbles back. Yes. But, yeah, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do this. Now, I'm going to spend... I know that I'm going to spend six on buying another golem for here. Which means that only leaves me with four for an upgrade. And I think I'm going to upgrade... Hmm. I'm going to upgrade the right leg. Or is it the left leg? Now, that means, that upgrade means, whenever, every time you make a golem, you may take one step with that golem and activate it without laying it down. Okay? So, that cost me three. And I then spend six 
to build another golem. So two spaces up. So is that right? You should have gone up six and down by two. One, two. Started there. Oh, I got to move it because of a thing earlier. So that normally co it cost me six because I'm putting it there. Um, but every time I place one, I can do it and I can lay it down and I get three knowledge. There you go. Right, that's my that's my action done. We are done. That is the end of the action phase for round three. So turn order finally changes. Um, characters has met the condition for the character. Yes. Is in the red zone. So doesn't use the character, but instead gets three money. One, two, three. Me, however, I'm actually going to spend the three coins to get two gold. Uh, which go, I'm going to put it on there. Which immediately gets me three clay. I think I'm doing this right. Okay. Don't lay it down. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's got the exclamation mark on. Yeah, move it and activate it without laying it down. Thank you. It's probably going to move soon anyway. Um, right, so that's the character done. Did I want the gold? Yeah, whatever. Right, okay, done. Next, income. So we'll do the Automa's income first. One resource. Two points. Students. Uh, one, two, three, four, five resources. Put them to ten. And also for artifacts, it's an extra one resource. There you go, eleven resources. Me, I get four knowledge. Four knowledge. I get three points. Two, three. I got my students, which is one clay, uh, one coin, and two knowledge, and four points. And my artifacts gets me one knowledge and three clay. Okay, so income has been done. Upgrades. So the Automa, the upgrade that's going to get the most points is blue. This is still round three. So it doesn't do the big one, but it does this one. No, it does this one, because that's the cheapest one. So it upgrades that, which costs it four. Okay, now me, well, look at all of these resources. Now I have two columns filled with books. I have three built of these and I have two of these. So right now, the best one for me is this, because that's gonna get me six points at the end of the game. But I know that I'm gonna get an extra book it's just I might end up putting that extra book here. So I think I'm going to spend the eight clay. And we're going to do this upgrade. Boom. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. You can also not move it and activate it in the first place. But don't let... Uh, yeah, you could also not move it and activate it in the first place. But you t yeah, the, the movement and the activating is optional. I remember that was one of the first questions I had about that tile. So we've done the upgrade, we now have to pay. I don't pay because I'd, I've been on that tile. So I don't have to pay for my out of control golems this turn, but the Automa does. So this one is two out of control, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. Has to pay seven resources to keep golems under control. That is it, that is the end of round three. Okay, so round four, we do the refresh. Final round of the game. I think it's looking quite favourable for me, but I am playing on the easy level. So there are four difficulty levels in the game and I'm playing on the easy one. Right, are we ready for some marble shenanigans? Right, what have we got? Okay, it's an interesting, fairly even mix, but none in the mirror action this time. We get rid of the book. Cycle these down. We get rid of these three action tiles. We get the remaining three action tiles.
And I think that's it. Okay, right, off we go. Golem movements. Okay, so I'm the first player now. I've got seven movement points plus three. I got ten movement points. <laughs> so we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Losing me a point. Or just a knowledge. We'll just lose a knowledge. We've got loads of knowledge. There you go. So there's there's my ten movement points. The Automa has got four, has got seven. So they're all lying down. They're all the rightmost ones. Um have I been doing the rules on it killing a golem? Hmm. I may I may have been doing the rules wrong because it hasn't been killing any golems. Oh, that's only if it's if it's there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, which one's it going to move first? Blue. So it moves that one first. So how many's it got? Seven. Four. Seven. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So it's going to have to pay a lot of stuff here, and it says. In Golem movement, whenever the um, Golem moves to sections 8 to 10, the Automa will always choose to pay knowledge and not points. So it loses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to put it down to minus 5 and we're going to knock a point off it. Okay? Yeah. That resource rule, I really would like to... Uh, I really would like to know the answer to that because the order in which we do that movement is important. Like this was the last one and it was three. So it went down from minus three, down by two, and then it lost a point. Yeah. Okay. Golden movement has been done. Actions and it's me first. Okay. We need to look at these rabbi cards. Have I done this? No. I need one more book. And this is done. All of my objectives are done if I just get one more book. And I can get a book. Now, what about the character? So this level, this, this round four character is always worth a lot of points. Spend five coins. I do have five coins to get one point for every upgrade I've done. Well, I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've done seven upgrades. So that's, that's a nice tasty chunk of points, if I can get a blue and a yellow. Do I want a blue and a yellow? Why not? I think so. I mean, there's the yellow. That yellow allows me to take a book and gets me loads of knowledge. Yeah, I think we do. I think this is quite simple for me. Now, what's that? That is reactivate one of your books that you've already got. Hmm, that could be quite nice as well. But that's also quite nice. Yeah, we like that as well. I like a lot of these. Okay. Which one am I worried about the Automa taking? This one. So I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take the yellow marble, which moves my student on the yellow street one space forward. I get three knowledge. I can do one blue upgrade. Should we do the big one? Let's do the big one. Okay, so I spend eight knowledge to upgrade this. Boom, I think is what they say. And then I can buy a book. Now, I have a, a book limit of three, so I can't buy a blue one. I could buy another yellow one, which would be quite nice, and that would get me all of this stuff. Or I could buy a green one, which is actually probably going to be better for me. So we'll buy a green one. I don't get any discount on it. Um, I probably want it to work. Yeah, we might work in a minute. Um, so what we're going to take? What are we going to take? I think I'm going to take this one. It cost me three knowledge. I'm going to slot it in here. So I can immediately gain plus one or down one on this. I might as well go up one because we're not going to move again. And I get a coin. 
Oh, I get that twice. So I move it up another one and I get another coin. <laughs> that goes in there uh, and then I get two points. Okay, have I done it right? Yeah, I could have bought a black one, but yeah, I mean, the black ones are quite good, aren't they? But no, I've gone, I've bought that one. That's the one I've bought. I might buy a black one next. We'll see. Okay. Um, done. Right, the autumn has go. Three actions left and that's it. First of all, is it getting a bonus? No. Is it going to place marbles? Yes. It's going to take the marbles from the one with the most. Then it's going to take blue if possible. So it takes that one. There you go. So it's doing this action uh, with a value of three. So it gets three clay, which is one, two, three. It then does a red upgrade. Um, which one does it do next? Uh, choosing the three clay cost leg before the torso. Okay, but it's the round. But it's round four. During the fourth round, the automat will attempt to upgrade the development, which provides three menorahs before any other. And this is the this is the odd wording. Is it says it will attempt to do it, but if we've already decided that it can it it can spend an infinite number of resources. Yeah, I, I think there definitely needs to be an FAQ for this solo rules and I will have a look on BGG afterwards because this whole spending resources when you're in negative feels wrong and, and what's making me question it is the wording. It says it will attempt to upgrade the development which provides three red menorahs and it's the word attempt if possible. Well, why wouldn't it be possible? So that's what it does. Because it's round four, it spends the eight clay, even though it doesn't have eight clay, and it goes down to one, two, three, and then we don't know how many points it loses beyond that. This has to be, this has to be asked on BGG. It's got to be. I'm just going to, I'm just going to pause for a minute because this is starting to bother me a bit. I think, I, I can't see how, I know I'm very fussy with rules, but I can't see how anybody who's played the solo game hasn't had this question. Because it seems like a, a fundamental question on the solo mode. Oh, apparently Paul Grogan's doing a solo playthrough. Excellent. <laughs> um, synagogue assembly. Yeah, if anybody knows, let me know. There's 148 rules questions on BGG. Yeah, if anybody wants to have a look on BGG, let me know. Uh, you've already had a look on BGG and couldn't find anything. Okay. Oh, can't upgrade if the track is in the red. Ah, yes. Thank you, Chuck. I remember that. So where was it? Uh, two, three. Was it on minus one? Yeah, there was something about that. Um... But it's not there. Where Where is that? It is in the rulebook somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, or maybe that's just the upgrade at the end of the round. I think that was just the upgrade at the end of the round. Uh, yeah. So in the income and development phase, it says the automa will upgrade the development of its choice, providing the resource marker is not in the red area. So I think that's only at the end of the round. So I think, it, I think it does do it here. Yeah, it's only the end of the round upgrade it doesn't do. Uh, Alan says, there's not many questions in BGG about the AI. That's a shame, because I've got a whole boatload of them. Um, right, so what have we done? I can't remember. What is it doing? It was, uh, it was doing the red upgrade, which it's done. And then it is going to build a golem even though it has minus five resources, it still builds another golem. We don't know how many points it loses. Does it lose one? Does it lose three? We don't know. No, in fact, it's going to cost it six. It's going to cost six resources to build a second golem. Yes, there are going to be a lot more questions about the solo mode. 
So I apologize in advance for people watching the video um, that were not playing with the correct rules, but yeah, unfortunately the rule book is the solo rule book is leaving a lot of opportunities for ambiguity. Um, yeah, and I, I have n I now have absolutely no faith that we're playing it correctly or not. And I'm and what's con what cons confusing me is I know a number of people that have tried the solo mode of this game and have not had these questions, and these questions seem obvious questions. Um, so golem creation. The automa will create the cheapest golem. Um, but I think they're all going to be the same because it has a golem in each column. So yeah, the automa has less golems. If tied, it chooses the district matching the uppermost strategy tile. So blue. So it's going to place a golem here and it's going to cost it six. It doesn't have any. Chuck's saying it's on page six under golem artifacts and study actions. Page six. Golem, artifacts, and study actions. When the automa performs one of these actions, complete the following steps. One, take the resources. Done that. Two, upgrade to development only if the resource marker is that. Right, okay, thank you. It is there. I missed that. So I'll put that there. So it didn't do that. It didn't do the upgrade. Right, thank you very much. And then perform the main action. Um, but this time it is, it is spending the six clay to build another golem here yeah does it has it unlocked that it hasn't unlocked that so i think that's it we may have knocked a point off it i don't know i'm beyond caring to be honest um right so i think we're done i think it did that it skipped the upgrade because it was in the red section um and it does the golem so yeah it is in there on page six that whenever it does the golem, the artifacts, or the study action, the upgrade is only done if it's not in the red area. Thank you very much, Chuck, for, for letting me know about that. that. That is in there, that is clear, that bit. Right, my go. I think I'm, I think I'm happy with what I've done. Um, I mean, I can get more books if I wanted to, because I think books are going to get me some more points which would mean working I also want to take a blue marble or white if I take white then I get to do that so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the white marble from the work action which means I don't move any of my students but I'm gonna activate two of my golems which is going to cost me three. I get a discount of two. So I spend one knowledge and I activate two of my golems and it's going to be that one and that one. And I'm going to buy two books at a discount, each at a discount of five. Um, oh, I could do with the clay. Oh, I can. Now, do we want, do we want some stuff here? That's actually quite nice, isn't it? That would get me, that would get me two points, plus another five. That would give me seven. Uh, and if I took that, oh no, it wouldn't be seven. It would be seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a lot of points for that one. That's a huge amount of points for that one. Although it's a bit of a waste getting it at a discount of minus five when it's actually free. What about this one? What's that going to get me in terms of points? That will get me, I do an upgrade at a discount of four, a blue upgrade at a discount of four. That's going to get me one more menorah, which is going to get me three points. Four, five, six, seven. So I think that's going to get me seven points. That's going to get me 10. Yeah, take the right black one, then the left black one. I mean, I could. Oh, because then I get to put that. No, if yeah, the right. The, the, 
If I do the right one and the left one, I get to do that twice. Oh, is that that I want to do twice? Just want to read one of my tiles as to what this tile does. Double the immediate effect of any book card, except for the black ones. Okay, so you don't get double the effect of a black one. So if I put a black one here, I do not get double the effect. Which is a shame. But I think it's still... See, oh, yeah, it's tricky. Only I had one more clay. It is a lot of points. If I take this one, I think we'll I think we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take this one. Even though I've got a discount of five, all I have to do is move a student back one. Which is gonna be this one. I'm a little worried about Graham. Graham Graham's got somewhat out of control. Um Graham might have to say goodnight. And we're going to tuck it here. So it's a shame I don't get the, you don't get the double benefits of the black ones. So I'm going to move that up by one. I get one study point and then I tuck it in and then I get points equal to where my, uh, well I get all of this. So I get two points plus another five. So I get seven points. Yeah, that's a lot of points. That's my first book. Now my second book could be this one. Because I don't really need that. Although if I take the black one and put it here, that's a fourth column. That's an extra one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an extra eight points. So why wouldn't I? Yeah, I'm going to put the black one in here. Okay, so I can do an upgrade at the cost of minus four. So I upgrade that. Uh, and then I tuck it in. And then I get all of this stuff. So I get a gold. And I can spend a coin for another gold. I think that's right. Because I could have re-triggered this and got an extra seven points. But putting it in there actually gets me an extra eight because I get one point for every menorah. Yeah. I think that's what I've done. Okay, right. There's my there's my work action done. That's my two golems used. They're very happy. Uh, it is now the Automa. And it is doing a marble action. Can it work? It can work. Yeah, the first criteria is it will choose the work action as long as it has one or more golem standing, and it has four. So it is going to choose this one. Now, it doesn't match the, the gems, but it was red, which means I've probably been forgetting to move these. Um, and then it's going to work. It gets a discount of one. Uh, so it pays two. It doesn't have two, so it loses a point or two points. We don't know. Um, but it's going to activate two of its golems. So it activates this this one first, because it always activates the rightmost one. That gets it three points. One, two, three. And then between these two, priority order, which is this one, which gets it two points. Okay, I think that's it. Rightmost golem first, colour strike your tile order. Yeah, so it, it's worked with two of its golems. Right, okay. Next, my go, I am placing the rabbi, and I think somebody needs to die. I think, I think Graham, who's got himself out of control, needs to say goodnight. Um, but, the thing is, is it actually going to get me any points? Because... If I, if I can't pay for him, 
then I lose five points if it's out of control. Is it five points if it's out of control? I think you pay what you can, and then you lose five points. Yeah, you lose five points for each golem you cannot fully afford to control. So I lose five points, but is there something I can do that gets me more than five points? I mean, that will get me five points. And it'll also get me five knowledge. <clears throat> now that five knowledge is no use whatsoever. Or I could take the top thing and get one of each and another objective card. And that objective card might get me potentially another four points. Whereas if we kill her, if we kill him, oh, we've got this one as well, St study point. Study point will get me two points, plus I'll get to reactivate a book, which could be that, that's seven points. So I think, that, I think that's what I want to do. I don't think I'm going to worry about paying the cost. We're just going to go on here, which moves my study points up to there, and I'm going to activate one of my books, and the book I'm going to activate is that one, which gets me an extra five points. I think that's the best thing for me to do. Okay, we're done. So now it is the Automa. Then the Automa is placing a rabbi. So we don't need to bother with the icons or anything else. It's going for tile number two, which is that one. So, oh, now we need to check something. <laughs> What's it going to do? Um, if there is a choice of effects. Oh, no, that's from a book card. Uh, where is it? Where is it? It is the rabbi action. Ah, it will kill. So the column with the grey background shows which automa... Uh, yeah, but important. If it has at least one golem in sections 8 to 10, it will choose to place its rabbi on an action that allows it to kill a golem. So it's doing that. And it will kill a golem. Um, to do so, the automa selects the action tile, if available, or it places it on the lowest space. Um, so, it's going to kill a golem. Um, what does it do when it kills a golem? Uh, where is it? Where, killing a golem. If an action or effect features the killer golem, the automa will kill the rightmost golem, which is this one. Uh, it places it in the leftmost available cemetery space, taking benefits and moving its marker. So it goes there, it moves down one on there, and it gets a gold. Is that right? It was there, it should have moved up one, two, one, two, down by one. I think I think I forgot to add it to. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. Oh, and it gets two resources. Not that that really matters. The reference on the back is very helpful. Yes, it's killing a golem on here. Yes, rightmost golem, coloured strategy tile, Okay, I think we are done. We've all had three actions each. Turn order doesn't really matter for the last game. Characters. So I've done it, which means I spend five coins and I get one point for every upgrade I've done, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine upgrades, nine points. Uh, the Automa didn't do it, didn't manage to match character colours. Next is Income and one upgrade. So I'll do my income first. I get five knowledge and a point. Um, I get five points. I get one knowledge and three clay. And I get the position of my thing. So you get one clay, I get one coin, and I get two knowledge and four points. Two, three, four. And what else? I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, and I've done that. Right, okay. The Automa is um, getting two knowledge for that. He's getting two points for that. Uh, he's getting one coin for that. And he's got his position of his student. So that's two resources and a point for that one. One resource for that one and two resources for that one. So one, two, three. Uh, and now we both get to do a free, we, we both get to do an upgrade. Um, I've got four clay, so I might as well just upgrade that. Oh no, I might as well upgrade that. It's cheaper. Okay, the Automa is going to upgrade uh, either red or blue. 
and it goes in order. So it's going to take a blue one, and it's in the last round of the game, so it upgrades this one. Uh, and it can, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Button coming upgrades done. We now have to pay for golems out of control. So I have to pay one, two, three, four, five knowledge. Oh, I have five knowledge, so I'm all right. <laughs> I forgot I was going to get the money. Um, the automat has to pay one, two, three for this one. Okay, which it can't do. So it loses five points. And then it has to pay for this one and it loses another five points. Wow, it's it's done really badly. Well, no, this is this is the weird thing. So this this whole thing about the resources, this now doesn't make any sense at all. I'm sure we've been playing this wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm sure we've been playing this wrong because here's the thing. It would have to pay one, two, three knowledge for this. It doesn't have three knowledge, but the way we've been playing it is it can spend beyond there. So yeah, to be honest, I'm 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 gonna give up at this point. Um because the rules are so unclear and so ambiguous, I have no idea whether I'm playing this correctly or not. There are there are two ways that this can go. It has to pay three knowledge for this. So option one. The marker goes down to the minus five, and then it loses five points. That's option one. But the way we've been playing this game is it can spend resources even when it's on minus five, and it just loses points instead, at which point it only loses one point instead of the five. So I, I've no idea what it should be, so I'm just going to move it down a random amount of points and not care about it. Um, but I think we've done. I think we've done that. Now, we do end of game scoring. And the way that end of game scoring works is the Automa scores 1, 3, 5, or 7 for every objective card based on your chosen difficulty level. So because we've been playing on easy, every objective card is basically just worth one point. But if we were playing on normal, they would be worth three points each. Uh, if we were playing on the next difficulty, they would be five points each. And if you were playing on hard, that's 28 points there. They're worth seven points each if you're playing on the hardest difficulty level. So we're just going to add on some random amount of points. Um, now, my, ob my objectives, so I get 12 points. Um, but also I've done two different types of objectives, which is another two points. The Automa scores one point for every five resources marked on the resource track. Um, if it ended on minus five, it loses a point. Now, what else do I score in final scoring? Oh, I got my menorahs. So yeah, we need to score for the menorahs. Okay, multiply the number of golems that I have built, three, by the number of red menorahs that I have. One, two, three, four. So that's 12 points. 12, 97. Blue menorahs, I've stormed this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, multiplied by four, 36 points. Okay, and yellow, I've done two artifacts, but I have no yellow menorahs. So I get no points for that. Okay, the Automa. Oh, and I also get two points at the end of the game for my study track. Uh, the Automa has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue menorahs, two cards, 14 points. It has built two golems. It has one red menorah. Oh, that's not very good. Two points. And it has no artifact upgrades at all. Okay, and it didn't manage to get up on the study track. Okay, so that's that, that, and that. That's that, that's that. One point for every five resources. I have five resources. I get a point. And I think we're done. We are done. So I scored. 136, the Automa scored, we don't know. We have no idea how many points the Automa scored, but I was playing on the easy level. I'm always a little nervous when I play a solo game for the first time about the difficulty level. Um, so I decided to play on easy, but the easy was 
definitely easy. Even if we'd played with slightly different rules for the scoring, I would have easily, easily beaten that. So I think if you're reasonably okay with the game, you should probably not play on easy because that was definitely a bit too easy. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for keeping me company. Oh, I have six red menorahs, do I? Oh yeah, not, not four. So I'm owed an extra six points. There we go. 142. That, that seems like a, <laughs> that seems like a good, uh, a good score. Um, yeah, so the AI seems good. I, I think the AI is good. The biggest problem is the solo rules. And I'm sorry to say, but um, the solo rule book needs an overhaul and it needs some fairly major points clarifying specifically about the spending of resources. That's the bit that was the most unclear. And I have no idea today whether we've played correctly as per the designer's intentions. I do have a professional relationship with Cranio, so I will be contacting them um, and asking them the questions. And I will put together an FAQ for the solo mode and I will post it on BGG because it looks like there isn't, uh, there isn't clarifications yet on, uh, on these things. And I'm curious as to know if anybody else has tried the solo mode, I know Luke's tried it, I know David's tried it, I know Tom Heath has tried it, uh, why they didn't run into these issues in their game. Unless I was doing something wrong with the resources, but maybe I was. And I'm going to apologise because if there is something in the solo rules that I have missed, which clarifies what we've been doing, then I do apologise for that. I'm being fairly, fairly critical on the solo rules because for me they were unclear and Caveat, I might have missed something in here. I don't think I have. I just wanted to I just wanted to say that. So keep an eye out for the FAQ. At some point tomorrow, because I'm busy tonight. In fact, I'm going out in 40 minutes time. <laughs> and I've got to learn how to play a game before tonight. Um, tomorrow, I will contact Cranio. I'll post a thread on BGG uh, with some FAQ once I've got the answers to it. And yeah, thank you very much for helping me um, struggle through it. But it was it was an enjoyable solo mode if it weren't for the ambiguity of the rules. And I think once you've got past the ambiguity, once we actually know the answers to the way the resource track works, I would definitely play it again. And I'm also keen on trying playing a two-player game with the Automa as the third player. Yeah, we're all done. Right, final thing before we go. Thank you very much again to everybody for watching and keeping me company. Um, Patreon, if you like the videos I make and you want to support me and support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Patreon supporters get exclusive access to the Slack channel, lots of behind the scenes videos, lots of extra stuff that's going on uh, on the channel. So yeah, if you're able to support me even just at $1 a month, uh, that really helps. Thank you very much for your support. I will be back at some point soon with some more videos, but for now, I'm going to say goodbye. Take care. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.